Welcome back. Uh, this is another one of our videos in uh, using our Duino simulator in the Tinkercad. Uh, and uh, in this video, we're going to focus on the servo control. There are a couple of other video. One is an introductory video and one kind of teaching you how to get in external input uses a pot, uh, potentiometer uh, to put, you, put inputs in. And uh, if you haven't watched those, or if you're not familiar how to use them, you should take a look at the description in the description section of this uh, video. I put the link to those two videos too, so you can prep for this one. In this video, we're gonna start introducing some something, a type of motor called servo, uh, which is used to control um, things, mechanically move things in one to the other direction. And typically this device has the ability uh, to move uh, uh, to move the device uh, 180 degree in one direction or 180 degree in the other direction, and that's all it does. So, so these arms, literally, these each one of these arms that are listed. This is a servo, and if you want to find it in your list, you just type servo and it pops up. So these arms will move 180 degree in one direction, 180 in two different directions. So if you want to you want to move something you tie that device to whatever you want to move to one of these holes and as the as the motor moves back and forth uh, your, your thing moves for example airplanes pretty much all the wings on the airplane flaps ailerons all of that stuff is controlled by this if you have a robot of any sort probably using sub servo in there uh, and it's everywhere any in, in your car uh, if you have a cruise control or autopilot um, sorry not autopilot but the driverless features or anything like that or if you move your um, if you move your even mirror by mechanically uh, by electronically uh, typing something in or moving a joystick and that's how you do so anything that electronically moves is probably using a servo. Here's an example of it. I put it in here. This is what a servo looks like. It's got three, it's got the three input. And the middle one is the signal. The outside ones are the power and ground. And, um, and what they do is uh, uh, as your signal, uh, you, can, you can put a uh, uh, power into the signal and depending on how long that signal as you move it so many degrees or not move it so many degrees. So what first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this servo and uh, rotate it. So it's kind of, so I don't have to draw wire. Oops, where did it go? Oops, it looked like I deleted it. Okay, so let me put another one on and I wonder what happened to it. Okay, so we'll just rotate it. That's great. And then move it down here someplace kind of convenient to reach power and ground. Uh, and, uh, and that's, that's, that's all we need to do. And then I'll take a wire from the power, go to the power, make sure you connect it to the power side. And then uh, we'll make it red. So we are kind of a good, good designers. We don't do fun shortcuts. Uh, put a black in there so if somebody looks at it, they know which one is ground, which one is power, and then and then what we'll do, we'll draw the next signal using green. Oops, no, no, I didn't want to do that. Okay, so the next signal comes out. This our signal. We'll bring it out and notice how I'm going horizontal and vertical just to make this thing looks kind of clean. And then uh, we we'll get over here and move to three. I got to use one of the ones with a little squiggly in front of it because the one in the squiggly, with the squiggly, the pins with the squiggly in front of it allows me to do what we call a pulse width modulation, which is a way for me to adjust the power level coming out of that pin anywhere between zero and 255, which is very useful to do that because that decides how far and how fast my thing moves. So. Um, so we'll, we'll talk more about that as we get into the code. That's all you have to do to make a connection to, to this uh, servo. In, it's basically a DC motor inside that with enough electronics so it can take the signal and reflect it in the movement 180 degree in one direction, 180 degree in the other direction. 
Okay, so now that you've done that, now we got to go to the code. Now we could sit down and write all the code ourselves from grounds up, but that would take a long time. You have to really, really understand how the servo motors work and all that kind of stuff. The nice thing is somebody's done most of that work for us, so we don't have to do it. So all we have to do is just uh, uh, borrow, not borrow it, but leverage it, uh, reuse it. So this include brings all that code, uh, that object that knows, that object knows how to deal with the motor and we don't have to get into that complexity. If you wanna get into that complexity, of course you can, this, this in the codes, the code is open source and available. You're welcome to sit down and go through and understand it, okay? The other thing we need to do, we need to uh, just, just to be, uh, clean like we've been before, instead of just using pin number three, we'll, we'll come up with the, since this is a servo, we call it servo pin. And we say servo pin is number three, and this is a servo pin. So th that's pretty much all we have to do to make sure we have everything we need to, to access it, okay? Uh, we need another variable because uh, once we, once we define a servo, we have to give it the name. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna create a servo, but let's say call it a, a very servo. That's another um, declaration. It's a very special kind of declaration saying, hey, I've got this variable, which uh, is called uh, my F servo. I don't know why I use for F, but F servo. Um, and then uh, this F servo is uh, what it does. It basically, um, creates creates a all the data and everything that is required to use the servo.h and interact with the servo motor. Again, there's a lot of code that goes behind this that we don't necessarily need to do this because uh, people, people did it and were nice enough to share it with us, okay? So we create what we call, we create a new servo object, an object that knows how to deal with servo or, or, or or it wraps the servo so we don't have to know what the internal of the servo is doing, okay? And we have this angle, we're gonna use this uh, later on to say how many degrees. This is gonna say number of, number of degrees uh, position for servo. That's just the integer, that's nothing else, okay? And we, did, we set it at zero. So we start at this lined up perfectly vertical, so that's fine. And then, uh, so in the setup, we have to do a few things just to make sure everything is all uh, good, good and uh, proper. So one thing we have to do, we have to say the servo, which the object servo we um, just created, where is it attached to? And we say it's attached to the server pin, uh, that's pin three, okay? So that's basically uh, kind of attach uh, attach to pin, uh, attach servo to Arduino. So that's what it's doing, okay? And then, um, and then the rest of the stuff you can leave alone. There's really nothing we need to do. Um, usually it's kind of a good idea to um, kind of move it one way, move it the other way, just to make sure servo moves Correct. You don't have to do that, but let's let's throw that in there. I have that code written, so I'm not going to drag you through it. And uh, so all I'm going, to, all this is doing is basically testing. It's always a good idea at the beginning, when the first time you start to make sure the servo is not broke or whatever. So this one basically moves the servo um, one away. I don't need the weight move the servo the other way. And I, oh, you know, no, I, I probably need those because I, otherwise it goes too fast for us to be able to see it, sorry. Oh, uh, so I've got to go back and put the delays back in because if, if I move it, it's going to move it so fast, I won't be able to, come, we, we, can, we can't quite appreciate the movement if you, if you, if you know what I mean. So this, every, for every degree of angle that, that we change, we we'll wait. 20 milliseconds, so it moves it slow enough for us to observe it. Okay, so 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 that's that. Let's let's do all that. I think that's about all we need to do for now. 
we'll come back and mess with the rest of it now. Just let's see if we got this part of the code correct. So what, what should happen is that uh, our code should come in, uh, figure out that, oh, if this thing is connected oh, to pin three, which I never did, what happened? I thought I connected it. Hmm. Let's go ahead and connect it to pin three before we forget. It looked like I forgot once. I thought I did this, maybe I forgot to do this. Somehow I deleted it, maybe. Okay, so pin three is connected. All is good. So let's run it and see if we run into any kind of issue. So we're going to start the simulation. Okay, well, it's not operating. Why isn't it operating? Okay, so we are doing that. Hmm. Okay, um, so all right, we're uh, we are back, and I I think what is happening is this uh, wire is disappearing. I don't exactly know why it's disappearing. So let's let's try to do it a different way. So we're going to take this pin. And we'll bring it, we'll bring it down here, and then we'll put it in here, and then we'll print this pin and plug it in the hole right next door. That should okay. That stayed so okay. So we're good to go. So if you remember, the code kind of looks like this. We've set it up so it goes 180. This this is a uh, for loop. It starts with angle equal to zero. It keeps incrementing angle by one until it reaches 180. And each time through, it updates the angle for the servo and waits 20 milliseconds and repeats this process. When it reaches 180, it reverses the process and gets back to where it was. So it's either adding angles or subtracting angles. So it's going one way or the other. So if we do this, uh, we start the simulation. And you can see what it's doing. It moves one away. So you can see if you have so if you have something tied to those arms, they will uh, move. Okay. All the stuff from the previous exercise is still there. We got a potentiometer that if you look at the serial monitor, as I move this, the value, the value will change. Okay. So I could potentially use the values of this to indicate the 120 degrees. So when this is zero, I can say set at zero degree and I can go around. And when I get over here, I can say do 180 degree angle. So I could use this movement of this potentiometer as a way of controlling the motor. So let's see how we do that. So we need to figure out, first of all, when we get in here, we know the angle value as it's red, okay? Now we got to convert that angle value somehow. Let me stop the simulation so I can work. So I got to convert that angle value from 1023 to 180 degrees. So how do I do that? We think about that and, uh, and then we can kind of decide how do we do that. Well, one would be uh, use, a, use a basic, uh, basic uh, relationship. You say, okay, uh, my, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the angle, new, the old angle, and if I take the old angle value, the one I read, which is maximum of 1023, if I multiply it by 18, roughly, 180, 18, and divide it by 10, 102, roughly, that gives me, that, and if I, if I do this, then it gives me uh, uh, the uh, the value I need. So what I'm basically doing, if you if you follow this equation, you'll see that I'm taking 1023 and I'm scaling it to be 108. So that's what I'm doing. Okay, because that's all the angle it can accept. So when you tell the motor to go a certain place, you can the maximum amount you tell them to go 
is 180 degrees, okay? So I don't want it to go more than 180 degrees because then I don't know what's gonna happen. All right, so now what I can do, now I can do a digital, uh, I'm sorry, you can use the server, right? F servo uh, dot right angle. And so angle is zero to 180 degrees. So it just kind of positions so this thing. So position servo between zero hundred and eighty degrees. Cool. Okay. And that's pretty much all we have to do. There's really not a whole heck of a lot more we have to do. We already have that half a second delay, about a second delay for all this stuff to happen. And actually, I might I might take this stuff. It makes it a little nicer if I put it all the way down here. A little cleaner exercise. Because then we turn the light on, the LED on do our conversion, whatever position we have for this thing gets positioned, the, this thing gets positioned on that. And then we do a digital write and there we are. Okay, so so let's, let's see, let's see if it, this is gonna work. All right, so doing the initialization, testing the motor, switching it 180 one way and rotating it back to its original position. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is what if what if I take this thing and I move it here? Notice as I move as I move the potentiometer from zero to 180 degree, that motor rotates all the way around. There's a bit of a delay because I have I have these half seconds, so it's not as responsive. So maybe if I shorten this a little bit, maybe go to Oops, let me stop the simulator. So if I go to maybe a hundred, that might be a little bit more responsive because then only every two tenths of a second is updating it instead of every second. The, the light will flash a little fast, a lot faster, so it looks weird, but we might have to do something with that separately, but we'll deal with that later. So start simulation. Yeah, so that's fine. It's kind of, it's not blinking, it's kind of vibrating, if you will. So so if I do this, it, it's a little more responsive. It doesn't, it does, oh, maybe less, oh, there we go. See, as I move, it kind of follows me. And one second felt like there was a little bit of delay built into it, but now it looks pretty good. And you can see at the numbers here, it tells me where, what value the potentiometer gets, and you can kind of see this moves, okay? So that uh, brings us to the end of this section. What we did in here, just as a refresher, we use the servo object to control the servo motor, which allows us to, with using the previous work we have done, uh, to, uh, the, the, to use the potentiometer to control the, this and eventually whatever we want to do. For example, the exercise with the finger, you could be potentially tying the finger one side and the other side, uh, the muscles to this motor and have the motor kind of raise uh, the finger and lower the finger. All right, thank you for watching and uh, see you later.